Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So in this video, we are going to talk about some amazing tips in JavaScript. And this is very helpful when you design the framework and then you write some code, some basic level of manipulations that you have to do. And then some amazing shortcuts also there in the JavaScript. For example, that how exactly I uh, filter the unique values from the array, convert integer to string and so many amazing tips that I'm going to tell you in this particular video. So without wasting our time, let's quickly create a file here. And then the file name itself, I'm writing quick uh, tips here. Okay, quick tips dot JS. Remember these tips will be very, very helpful for you when you design the things and writing the logic. And uh, this will save a lot of time for you instead of writing the, okay, lengthy code unnecessary. So first thing that we are going to talk about is that, that you have to find for example, there is an array and then you have to find the unique values from the array. Okay. So how will you do that? So let's see, I'm having one array, which is equal to some values are there and some duplicate values are there. So one comma, two comma, three comma, two, once again, then again, three, then I'm writing four, then two is there, then five is there like that. Okay. Then let's see one more two is there. Okay, so you can see that two is uh, coming a couple of times, three is also coming a couple of times like that. And I really want to define the unique values from the array. So what you just need to do, let's see, I'm going to store it in some another array variable. Let's see, this is my unique array, which is equal to, and then you just simple write square bracket and then write three dots here. Okay, simple write one, two, and three. And this is called the spread operator. Remember this name is spread operator. And then you simple write with what? With a new, and then you have to use the set object and then supply whatever the array that you are using it here. Okay, the property of the set object is always maintains the unique values. And in the next line, when you write this console.log and then you print this particular unique array, then let's see what happens. So I'm going to uh, run this. I'll open the terminal and I'm going to run this quick tips.js and you can see it is actually filtering it out all the duplicate entries from here so all the twos and threes are gone like duplicate values are gone it's giving me the unique values tomorrow if i write let's see some more let's see seven 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 so it will give me only one seven here it will remove all the duplicate sevens okay pretty amazing great now the second one we are going to talk about is that convert integer to a string so sometimes what you have that one integer value is there and then you have to use it with the let's see in the playwright or the cypress you have to enter the value on the web page and when web page it takes only string but you have one integer value for example let's see one a number which is equal to let's see 32 right any number and then again i'm writing this equivalent give me the string of this so let's creating one number string variable whatever the variable name you simple write this number plus with single quote and that's it. That also you can simple do it. And then you simple write, this is my console dot log and number str. Okay. Now this number str will be a, a string value <coughs> with 32 with, will be the string value. So if you run it, it's giving me 32, but how will you prove that this is the string value, right? So in that case, let's see in this particular str, if I'm writing plus 10, then in that case, it will give you what? It will have the concatenation. It will not give you the 42 here. Okay. So let's see. Can you see 32, 1, 0 here? So 10 will be concatenated. Why? Because 32 is with the, see, the 32 will look like this internally with the single quote. It's like a string. And in the string, whenever you are add any arithmetic data or let's see any numbers, then in that case, it will be concatenation. So in that case, it will be 32, 1, 0 instead of 42. So this is integer to a string like this. You can do it. Or there is one more way you can do it here that uh, you can use the string object here like this and whatever the number that you really want to supply that also you can do it. So a string number like this also you can use it and then you can just store it in another constant. Uh, let's see number string. Uh, one is equal to this and uh, I'm printing it on the console that console dot log and uh, this number is string one. So now this number string one will be a string value just to check that again, I'm making adding with the 10 that it should give you 3210 here. So this is also giving you 3210, right? So this also will be with single quote 32. 
so there are two ways you can do it you can just simply append with the uh, single quote or double quote or you can just use the string method or object also like this okay <clears throat> then or you can say this is actually not a method or something this is a string constructor actually you can say that now we have to let's see convert a floating value to the integer value okay so let me just quickly write that the float to integer value how to do this in order to float to integer value for example let's see i have one float number float number means a decimal pointer number let's see 3.76 something like this or any number right and then i want that equivalent integer number that you have to give it to me so simple method is there parse int method is there and parse float method is also there so you can simply use the parse int method and then supply this particular float number here so float number will remove 7.76 from here and it will give you only three so when you just simple uh, print it on the console that console dot log and then give me the the equivalent integer number 0.76 will be removed automatically and it will give you only and only pure integer number which is three because an integer we cannot hold the point values so this is floating to integer you can use it quickly here fine let's talk about the fourth tip the fourth tip i'm going to talk about the check if a particular variable is a number this is also something very important sometime check if a variable is a number how will you check that for example let's see i have one constant value let's see for example a variable which is equal to let's see 56 okay and then i really want to check it's really a number or not so you simply write one if condition and here first of all that remember type of operator we can use it here and then type of what type of value is should be equal to equal to what it should be equal to equal to first of all it should be a number that also you can check it and you can write one more condition here that it should not be not a number so there is one already there is one function that is n a n function is there and then you can supply this particular value over here so not a number it says that returns a boolean value that indicates whether a value is reserved value non or not a number so it will tell you that this is not a number or not and then what i'll do in that case i simply just reverse this particular condition so of course 56 is not a number so it will give me what it will give me not a number so it will give me false and this not will make it true and this type value is also number so both the conditions will be true in that case then i can say yes the value is actually a number okay so whatever the value is there i'm just going to print it on the console that value plus is a number okay so let's run it again and you can see yeah 56 is actually a number but let's see for example if i'm passing 5.6 also let's see is it really working or not yes 5.6 is also a number but if i'm saying that okay give me a t t is what a kind of a string value a character value so let me save it and run it again so now i can see is uh, not giving me anything because this condition is not satisfied here so that's why i can write one else also and then whatever the value that you are writing i can just put a simple print that is not number is not a number okay so let me just run it again and here you can see that t is not a number which is absolutely correct t is not a number here okay so i'm again back to 10 only like this so next tip is about that's very famous into a question that you have to swap two variables so how will you swap it so swap variable uh their values for example let's see i have uh, two variables let's see let a is equal to let's see five okay and then i'm writing another variable which is let b is equal to 10 two variables i'm taking it and then i really want to swap without using any third party or third uh you know a third variable without using any third variable so how to do that pretty simple you simply write a comma b which is equal to what and then reverse the sequence b comma a and that's it and then after that you simply print that console dot log and then you print both the values a comma b here let's see what exactly it's printing so a will become 10 and b will become 5 because we have already reversed it you can say 10 and 5 so a is 10 and b is equal to 5 and that's it superb so like this you can just simple one statement one expression that you have to write and then you are good to go with that so you can without third variable you can use it here let's talk about the sixth one 
The sixth one says that check if an object has a specific property. This is also something very important. Then check if an object has a property, right? So let's create an object first. For example, let's say I'm going to create a person object, which is equal to, and this object is having two things. Let's see name John and age is equal to 28, something like this. Okay. This is the object. This is how we create the object. Then what I do here that I really want to check this person object, right? This person having some property or not, which property name or age property, any of them is having it or not. So let's say I really want to check the name property is there or not. So simple writing has person has own property. All the suggestions should come here. Let me just check that which property that you're looking for. I'm looking for the name property. And if it is there, then I'm just going to write that console.log. Okay. The person has this name property. So here I'm writing person has name property. Okay. Let's see, is it really working or not? So I'm going to run it. So yeah, you can say the person has name property. If I really want to check the person has age property or not. So yes, person has, I can write whatever the property name is there that person dot name also I can write it here or let's see person has property, some generic message I'm printing it here. So you can say that, okay, yeah, person has property. So my if condition is satisfied, but I'm looking for that. This person is having address property or not. There are no address defined for this particular person object. So then in that case, it's not giving me anything. It's not coming inside the if condition here. Nice. So you can just simple check with has own property method here like this. Now let's talk about the seventh tip. The seventh tip is that remove falsy values from the array. This is also very interesting. Falsy value means I'll tell you falsy values from the array. What do you mean by falsy values? Falsy values are, for example, uh, let's see, first of all, remove false remove a uh, zero, something like this, or let's say remove a zero value, remove a double quote like that, remove null values. Okay. From the array, remove undefined values from the array and remove not a number also from the array. So these are called the falsy values. How to do this? So for example, let's see, I have one array, let's see values array which is equal to, and in this particular array, I'm having different value. Let's see zero comma one comma, let's see false comma two comma, let's see one single quote. Then again, comma three comma, let's see null. And then I'm having this undefined comma, not a number and then comma four. So all these falsy values, I really want to remove this. So what you can do, you can just simple apply the filter method. You can use it here and automatically it will be used. So this is simple filter and apply the a Boolean. So a simple write values array dot filter and filter what simple write Boolean here. Okay. So that's it. So what exactly it will do? It will give me the, a new array. Let's store it in the new array. Let's see new, um, value array, which is equal to this. And let's see if I'm printing this particular new value array with the console dot log and the new value array. So it should remove all the falsy values. So can you see one, two, three, four is giving me zero also considered as a falsy value. So one, two, three, four is removed from here. So sometimes if you are getting a lot of falsy values in a specific array, you're doing some calculation or you would uh, using uh, these kind of arrays and you really want to remove all these unnecessary values, you can remove it with one single line and that's it. So you can filter it out. Let's talk about the eighth tip. The eighth tip is that simple. There is a string you have to convert to the uppercase and the lowercase. So uppercase and the lowercase, how will you do this? Simple, uh, same method is available in other classes, other languages also two uppercase and two lowercase. So for example, let's see if I have one, um, is uh, value is there. That's in the V in automation labs. Right. So some values are uppercase, some values are lowercase here, but I really want to convert everything into a, an uppercase. So a simple right str is equal to whatever to uppercase. Right. And let's see, I'm storing inside another variable. Let's see, uh, u1 is equal to this. So u1 will become what? 
u1 will become Naveen automation labs here and then I'm going to write that to the lowercase let's see l1 will become all the values will be in the lowercase so you can just print it on the console so let's see I'm writing console.log and then I'm printing this guy u1 and then once again I'm writing console.log I'm printing l1 here so let's run it and you can see capital letter and a small letter pretty simple let's talk about the ninth tip the ninth tip I'm going to talk about that uh, <clears throat> you have to calculate uh, the sum of the array that we have already used with the reduce that also we can do it but better let's check let's see another ninth tip that I'm going to talk about let's see check if array contains a specific value or not this is also very important for the validation point of view that check if array uh, contains a specific value right so how will you do that so let's create one array first of all so let's write one constant and let's see this is my language array which is equal to and different uh, let's see programming languages are there so here I'm writing let's see Java then I'm writing JavaScript okay then I'm writing Python then I'm writing let's see one more that is a uh, Ruby language and I really want to check this is having the specific value or not so you can use simple includes method and then we are absolutely good to go with that so you can just simple write one if and then you can simple write lang dot includes includes what let's see if it is including the JavaScript if it is including the JavaScript I can simple say yes that console dot log and then I'm just going to print that um, yes the specific value is found here otherwise not found okay so it's pretty simple again you can check it here it says that found because javascript is found there perfect so this is how you can just check if the array contains a specific value or not and then i really want to check that uh, uh let's see check if the specific array is the empty array or not how will you check that so i'm writing the check if an array is empty it means no values are there so first let's see i'm going to create one empty array so for example let's see empty is equal to this this is the array name whatever the name you want to give and i really want to check that uh, so what you can do here you can just write one condition and then you can just quickly check the length so em empty length is equal to equal to if it is equal to equal to zero then in that case this is the empty array is empty otherwise array is not empty so of course if we are right now we don't have anything so you simple run it it says empty so super simple that is also very straightforward maybe you are already aware of this okay then let's see how to generate a random number in javascript sometimes we have to generate a random number and everything so we can give some range minimum or max range so let's see for example i'm going to write the constant some minimum number is equal to 10 and then I'm writing let's see maximum is equal to 20 something like this let's see I have written okay and then what exactly I'm going to do that I'm going to store whatever some random number in this particular variable which is equal to I can use the math right this math interface dot and then we can use this method our method and then here you can write that math dot random okay and then random is a function so you use it like this and then multiply with what and then i'm doing this calculation that let's see this max minus minimum plus one over here like this and then i'm adding this once again let's see some minimum number also over here like that okay or i'll do one thing i'll just after that plus minimum number here like this so in that case let's see if i'm printing it some random number and then random number i'm printing on the console so let's see what exactly it is giving me so random number 12 let's run it again random number 15 can you see it here random number run it again random number 17 13 17 20 13 so the minimum is 10 and the maximum is 20 but if i'm saying okay minimum is 10 and maximum is 200 then in that case let's see see 118 so it will not go beyond 200 see i'm keep running it and 16 90 like that and not less than 10 so like this also you can simply generate the random number between two numbers okay one thing i missed that 
uh, integer to string we have seen, but what about a string to number? So let's see, constant string number is equal to 32 here. So I really want to generate a specific number here in that case. So you can use parse double and parse float both. So parse float also, we can use it. Parse int I have already uh, shown you. And then here I'm writing, okay, fine. You give me the, whatever the uh, string is there. So it will give you the equivalent number value of this. So let's see, for example, here, I'm going to store it here. Let's see, I'm storing in the X1 and let's see what is the value of X1 here. So console.log and print X1 here. Okay. So let's see what happens. So clear the console and here is giving me the pure 32 number here. Okay. So this is how you can get the number with the parse float also. Okay. It will not give you 30 point. 2.0, but if it's, let's see if I'm having 32.0 here, then in that case, will it maintain 32.0? No. So parts float also converts a string to a floating point number, but let's see if I'm giving 32.111, let's see what exactly it is giving to me. Then in that case, it's giving me 32.111, but it is giving me, let's see 32.01. Then in that case, again, if I'm running it, it's giving me the equivalent floating point number. 32.01. But if I'm giving only 32.0, which is actually 32 only. So in that case, it is not giving me 32.0. It's giving me only 32 here. Okay. In Java, it will give you 32.0, but here in JavaScript, it's 32 only. Okay. So this is another thing. Let's talk about the, another tip. Let's see. I have uh, some elements in the array. <clears throat> okay. So join array elements into a string. That is what I'm doing. So join array elements into a, a string value. Hmm? So how to do this? So for example, let's see, I have one constant number of words are there. So let's see, words are equal to, I'm um, writing, let's see, hello. And uh, one more values are there. Let's see, hello, Naveen or hello world or whatever. So hello, Naveen that I have written. And I'm going to create another variable. Let's see, this is my, I want to generate a complete sentence here. So let's see one uh, sentence variable, which is equal to what you simply write words dot join method. You can use it and join it with what, with a space here. Okay. Like this, so what exactly it will give me? It will give me hello Naveen with a space. Okay. So if I really want to print that console dot log and then print the sentence. So see, it will start giving me hello Naveen. So you can see hello Naveen. So you can join with anything. If you really want to join that hello by Naveen. So it will start giving me, it will be added with join with the by. Okay. If you really want to give us some space here, that also you can give it. So it will give you hello by Naveen here like that. If I'm giving some um, special character, for example, let's see um, semicolon. So it will be hello semicolon Naveen here. If I'm giving, let's see some dot here. Then let's see what exactly it's giving me is giving me hello dot Naveen here. Okay. So I'm just giving a space. So it's giving me hello space Naveen here. Okay. Perfect. So this is also done. Let's quickly that we will check one more thing that what if I really want to access some object property dynamically. So one object is there and I really want to access its quick property. So for example, let's see one more. Um, so here I'm writing get object property, the specific object property. So let's see, I have uh, one object here that let's see user object, which is equal to the username. I'm writing some name here. So let's see the username is Tom and then age that I'm writing. The age is let's see 25 and let's write one more here that uh, let's see date of birth. Okay. So date of birth I'm writing in the form of, uh, let's see some, any value, let's see zero one zero one. And here 2020, something like this, not 20, whatever the date of birth is there. So I'm writing in single code. So it's, let's see, 0101-1995 here, something like this. Okay. Or whatever the age calculation will do. Okay. I'm not exactly calculating the age here. And uh, so what I'll do here, see, I'm directly printing console.log, whatever the user object that you are having it put a square bracket and which property you want to access. So I simple say name property with single quote, because see this name is available in the form of a string. 
So name property I really want to access. So give me the name property. So user and then supply name. So here you will get Tom here. So if you really want to print, give me the date of birth. So let's see if I'm passing the DOB. The date of birth will be 0101-1995. It's giving me that. So make sure that the key should be written in single quote here. That is the property name. Then I'm talking about the 15th one. Uh, let's see, for example, I really want to generate some another array or duplicate value or shallow copy of the array or cloning an array object array or the object. So I'm writing that clone an array or object. How will you clone it or create a shallow copy of this, right? Of the array. So for example, let's see, I'm having some uh, marks array, which is equal to some marks are there. Let's say 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 50 comma 66 comma 70, something like this. Let's see, I have written and I really want to create a clone copy of this. So it's pretty simple, just like we used it here. Somewhere uh, we used it uh, here also that find the unique values from the array we were using this, right? This operator, right? The same thing here though, you can use it here as well. So spread operator, once again, you can use it. So what you have to do, you simply write marks and then see this, put a square bracket and you dot, dot, dot and marks, that's it and then store it in some variable. My variable name is, let's see some constant marks, a duplicate array variable, something like this. And when I print this uh, console dot log duplicate, <clears throat> this marks duplicate. Okay, then in that case, it will exactly copy of marks. So see, I'm printing on the console and you can see 10, 20, 30, 50, this one. Okay. So like this also, you can do that. For example, let's see, I have this particular user object and I really want to create a copy of this object. Also the same thing, you can use it with the objects as well, but objects are uh, written with the curly braces, right? So what you have to do instead of a square bracket, a square bracket is for the array. Now we have to use the curly braces here. So curly braces dot, 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 and then the user object and that's it and make sure that okay you're giving some one space also here like this so spread operator you can apply on the uh, objects also and then you have to store it in some variable so let's see i'm going to store it the constant and uh, let's see user duplicate is equal to this now the error is gone and then i can print it on the console that console.log and print user duplicate here so user duplicate will have the exact duplicate copy like user object okay so see this i'm running it can you see name tom age 25 and date of birth we are getting it here so this is called the spread operator remember this thing very famous interview question also you can easily solve many problems with this a spread operator a spread operator we have used it here as well the dot 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 okay three dots we have to use it here Okay, so this is also fine. You can do the cloning. Then what if I really want to convert an object to array? That is again something important that convert a object to array. Okay, how will you do this? So for example, let's see again, I'm having one object. Let's use this particular object one more time. And I'm giving this object name. I'm changing it. Let's see employee object. Employee name is Tom 25 and date of birth is there. So I want to convert this object to an array, right? But I want to create three types of array. So see this carefully. The first type of array that I want to create that keys array only for keys. Keys means give me name, age, and date of birth. That's it. So how will you do that? You simply use object here and dot, right? Keys here, keys of what? Keys of this particular employee object. That's it. So object dot keys, it will give you the keys array and you can store it inside the variable keys array is equal to this. And when you try to print it on the console, so let's write console dot log and give me the keys array. So it will return the array of the keys only name, age, and date of birth. See, this is so nice name, age, and date of birth, right? So this is the first thing. Second thing, 
what if i really want to fetch the i want to create the array of for the values only it means the values array then in that case what will you do you simply write values here object dot values and let's say i'm storing inside the values array and i'm printing this particular values array here and then i'm running it so see it's giving me a tom 25 and then the date of birth value only the values array i'm getting it now the third thing i'm talking about that what if i really want to create the key value pair format array that is the c thing that is give me the key and the value array in the pair you have to give it to me right so in that case what will you do in that case you have to use object dot entries here okay object dot entries of the employee and then let's see i'm giving this is my uh, let's see key value array hmm? and then i'm printing this particular key value array on the console so let's see is it giving me the array of that as well or not so yes see <clears throat> name tom age 25 and date of birth is this so this is exactly giving me the key value array here this is so amazing we don't need to write any other method and nothing no loop nothing it will just immediately convert that okay so this is the uh which remember 16th tip that we have done okay now please wait for a few more minutes 17th tip that also i'm going to give it to you that uh, how will you get the current because this is also sometime important that you have to fetch the current a uh, date and time hmm? so there is one date object is already there with the help of that we can do it so you can just create the object of new date here okay so let's create the object of new date and then you can just store it in some variable let's see for example constant uh, let's see current date which is equal to this and then if i really want to fetch some information from this particular current date so for example here i'm writing that a console dot log that give me the current date and from this current date what do you want let's see to there is one method to locale string i can use it here okay this local string method is actually hmm. okay so now if you see this it's giving me the current date and time so right now you can say that this is the date and time and this is the time in my clock you can check it here 247 10th of august perfect so you can just get the information here like this okay then i really want to check the next one check if variable is really defined or not so let's see for example i have a uh, check one specific variable is defined or not so i'm going to create a variable let's see for example let and the variable is i any variable which is not it is actually a defined or i would say it's not defined but we have not given the value we have not assigned any value right so we have uh, so if i really want to print it see this console.log and then i'm printing the value of i it will give you what undefined here see i'm running it okay just a second let me save it and run it so see it's giving me undefined so how will you check that this is undefined right so you can just simple write if and then you can check the type of once again the type of of what type of i equal to equal to equal to what undefined here like that if it is this then i'm writing variable is not defined like this remove this so of course that variable is not defined the condition will be satisfied and then if i'm running it it's saying variable is not defined it means it's not initialized that's why the default value is undefined over here okay the next step i'm going to talk about that what if i really want to truncate an array right for example i have uh, one array let's create one array which is uh, let's see something the testing array which is equal to and some numbers are there let's see 0 comma 1 okay 2 3 4 5 6 7 something like this so what is the current length of the array the current length of the array if you see that 0 to 7 values are there it means current length of the array is 8 actually right you can say that eight values are there four plus four eight values are there but i really want to truncate it so what you can simple write that testing dot 
just define the length a new length i can define i want to truncate it to 3 okay and then i really want to print my console dot log and print this particular testing array one more time so what exactly it will give you it will just the size is 3 now it mean it will hold the initial three values 0 1 and 2 that's it okay so see this 0 1 2 so you can truncate okay this is also nice you can just manipulate the uh, length of the array also like this okay one last thing the last 20th one is that last item in array right sometimes i don't want to uh, use the a loop or anything i simply say okay fine tell me the last item in the array without using the dot length Hmm. Otherwise, you can go to dot length minus one, the highest index. You can take it and then you can fetch it. But without using the dot length, what will you do? So let's see. For example, again, I'm creating this is the array name. Array name is let's see pop array. Okay. And here I'm saying, saying, give me the last element. In that case, what will you do? You simply write pop dot slice. You can use it and then supply minus one here. Okay. Pop dot slice minus one and. Uh, Let's see. I'm storing in some n one variable, and what is the value of n one? Console dot log n one here, and n one will give you seven here. Whatever the last element is there, see it's giving me seven here. Okay, so this is your last element in the array. Okay, it will be applied on the string array or anywhere. So these are the some you know special twenty tips. Maybe there are more also, but these are I found it really, uh, really useful and. Uh, when you design the logic or any complex logic or any uh, framework that you're developing and then where these are the different manipulations on the array strings and conversions of integer and numbers and everything if you really want to do that you can use these tips i hope this is helpful for you so that's all for this video please share this video with others i hope you're liking this javascript series if you're liking it please please subscribe to the channel i'll see you in the next video till then take care and god bless you all guys